Hi. Um, Hi. We're Becky chatting today, my really good friend Becky. So I already apologize if we get silly because I don't think we've ever made it through like 30 minutes of our life without getting silly. No. So it's fine. <laughs> um, but this is Becky Riddle and Becky's talking to us today about traveling and fitness. And we'll get into all that in a minute. I just want her to introduce herself. I know that um, my kind of little um, favorite thing about Becky and fitness and travel is how she's taken her yoga and done it, you know, internationally. She's lived internationally and she's been practicing and teaching and taking yoga for a long time, teaching for 10 years. And she has, you know, even pictures in, was it Angkor Wat doing like crow pose on a cool little temple? Um, yeah, so Becky, tell us a little bit more about yourself. So hi, my name is Becky and I am a school teacher by day. I teach fourth grade. And after school or before school, I teach at Equinox. I teach um, bar, dance conditioning, and Pilates. And I have a passion for travel and for the wellness of all people and learning about new cultures. Um, I have traveled to 41 countries. I've lived in Spain and so that really was an easy springboard to go check off a lot of countries on my list and learn about a lot of new cultures that way. Um, and I really enjoy learning about new countries and cultures through um, working out and doing yoga and dancing. Yay. Um, I got to visit Becky when she was in Spain and we had so much fun. We actually, we taught yoga to your um, school kids in Spain. That was yeah. fun. I got to pretend like I knew Spanish. That was cool. Um, <laughs> so I think um, I, a lot of the questions today have come from some people who are um, currently in my wellness program. Uh, but the biggest thing that I really, you know, when I think about traveling, I typically think about vacation. I think a lot of us do because we don't travel regularly. We definitely, most people haven't lived in multiple countries. And um, I think we get that mindset to well, if we're traveling, we're on vacation. So we're taking a break. Well, you've traveled a ton and you've maintained a pretty high level of fitness. So how in the world do you travel and stay fit, but still enjoy your vacation, like without wasting a lot of time in the hotel gym or something? Okay, so I always make sure I have a few things in my backpack, because I only travel lightly in a backpack. I always make sure I take goggles and a swimsuit, regardless if I'm going to somewhere where it's snowing or anything of that sort, because you never know what kind of spring you run into. Feel like. Yeah, you can always find a pool. Yeah, exactly. And um, I make sure I take um, running shoes because I need something comfortable for my feet and um, yoga pants. I travel on the plane normally in yoga pants, so they're already going to be in my bag. Um, I make sure whenever I travel, that I explore the city through walking and I walk a lot. So that's mostly what, how I get my fitness is through walking. And I have logged 35,000 steps because I, I'm like, okay, I have to get across Paris and it's going to take this long. But on the way, there are so many beautiful things. Um, one thing that is really in Barcelona when it kind of hit me when I was walking a long way, I was chugging along, walking, walking, walking. And then I started to look up. And it is the most beautiful thing. So not only when you're walking across the city, you get to see many of the neighborhoods, but when you look up, you can see a lot of beautiful architecture or just the environment around you. Um, I also try to experience the nature by um, planning on going hiking or um, running along the beach. A lot of times, uh, there's some kind of trail or street or road that I, uh, or on the sand on the beach, I try to run or just walk because walking in sand is a lot of hard work. Uh, so I've done that. Or when I go to some cities, I love to dance. Dancing is my passion. So I try to find um, a class, an adults class, either ballet or... How do Because I know some people are intimidated by... Um trying to go to it. How do you, what is your recommendation for finding a class in a city? So I just look up adult dance classes and um, I just go and, and I mean, a lot of times when I walk in, I kind of don't know where I'm going. So I give myself some time to get lost so that by the time I'm there, um, a lot of times 
it's in local neighborhoods. So uh, they're not going to be in the touristy places because most of the people who go to dance classes are going to be the people who live in that city. So I just, um, you know, I try to tell them I knew, and I think they can kind of get it. Uh, <laughs> and you don't speak the language, that'll be easy. Like I, I knew, not lost. You know, but through dance, really, it's just it's a language through your body. So I don't need to necessarily know exactly what they're saying. Um, I just need to be able to follow along and laugh at myself because I have totally messed up and going the wrong way because I don't understand, you know, all the languages and that's okay. And we just laugh. And that's why I like taking adults classes because mm. a lot of times it's more for beginners than um, you have to make sure it's not a professional class, a professional adults class, but uh, yeah. Um, so don't go most, into that. Yeah. Right. And most of the time, the people that they're adults too, and they, they are there for enjoying their physical fitness. So. And I think I'm um, too, you were saying, make sure it's like not a professional class. So maybe even looking up like a local gym first, that way, you know, you're not stumbling into like a professional ballet company. Um, but uh, Zumba actually is one of those dance classes that I find that usually, even if you're not super into Zumba, if you're looking at a class schedule and you notice they have Zumba, it's probably going to be kind of like a fitness based class. Wouldn't you say? Cause Zumba is yes. pretty international. That's an, kind of an easier one to find. I would say than maybe, I don't know. What are some other, like your favorite local class or something like at the rec, we have something called body blaster. You're not going to find that same name everywhere. And I wouldn't know if it was body blaster right. because I don't understand the language. Right, exactly. <laughs> Super cool. I love that you hit on just walking. Because I think some of us get so obsessed with, well, I need to find a gym or I need to pick up weights. And like our bodies are, they're designed to be fit already with what we can do naturally. So that's super cool. Mm -hmm. that you and a lot of times I, um, you know, the, the views of when you go up the stairs of the bell tower, that gives a good workout too. Or walking up this, instead of taking an elevator, walk up mm -hmm. the stairs or, you know, a lot of times in, in Europe or in other places in Asia, you have to walk up the stairs because there is no handicap accessible. Um, right. Yeah, we get, kind of, like, we get used to that here. I think we forget. Very cool. Okay. So some of the, let's say, you know, okay, I've got it. I want to be fit. I want to travel and I know how to do it now. But, and a lot of the people who are doing this wellness program right now that I've been talking about, they've submitted questions. They are, um, like moms or they have a family or maybe this is like a family vacation. Have you, first of all, have you ever traveled with somebody who didn't prioritize fitness and how did that go? And how did you work with that? And then, um, what what are your tips for something like that? If you're traveling with a group that does, and you don't want to be the one who's always the loner, but how do you how do you do that? How do you work that in? Well, I encourage um, walking. So going to a museum and walking around the museum, going to places that encourage getting your steps in, um, because I've traveled with people who like to sleep late, and I'm not that kind of person. So um, I'll do yoga and practice some yoga poses while they're still asleep. Or I tell them, hey, I'm going to go walk this distance. I need to, I'm going to be back at this time. Or I'll, so I'll either go run or walk and then come back while they're still asleep. Um, and just really encouraging, to, instead of taking an Uber or taking a taxi, let's walk there. So when I plan my trips i try to do things that are, are kind of in the same area so that it's too close to take a taxi but far enough you know where you, you can you, you know you can walk there and get some good steps in very cool um so let's see i there's one more kind of in that line of things that was a very specific question so have you ever done yoga in an airport and i know with social media we see kind of like people doing yoga all over the place and one person in particular, she says she travels with her yoga paws. And you kind of hit on this when you talked about taking a class somewhere. Um, but she said she's always too intimidated to actually put them on and do yoga like in an airport. And I, I would even venture a guess like somewhere non-traditional. Like how do we get over that fear and just do it? Well, 
most of the time you're never ever going to see those people ever again Love that. That's in your so life so it really it doesn't matter what they think and you know I've had people look at me like what is she doing but I think that yoga is um for the most part pretty well known now around the world that okay or that she's doing some kind of stretching or something they'll get the idea and really who cares what they think you need to do what you need to do for your body um also what i i mean if you're embarrassed about doing uh, yoga in the airport because so many people are around you can totally do chair yoga yeah you don't have to get on the ground you can do some sort of um, chair yoga to do your sun salutation because really when you do yoga in the airport it's really more to release and relax and uh, restore so you you don't you're not going to do an hour-long practice of inversions and really difficult poses right. in an airport it's really just to relax your hip flexors and your good posture again so that chair yoga and there's chairs obviously in an airport that you can use very cool um so i was thinking of something like extra that i was going to ask you i'll have to come back to that because i can't think of it right this second um but let's i want to ask you some fun questions just because i know people want to know this so you've traveled everywhere what is your favorite place if you can narrow it down your favorite place that you try and if you have to narrow it down maybe put it under the category of like to walk around so your favorite place you've walked around and why is that Ooh, ah the favorite place i've walked around Oh, this is a tough question. You changed the question. <laughs> I think favorite place you drove. Okay, you can just do favorite place. Okay, no, no, no. I will because I was going to say what my favorite moments are because I don't have necessarily a favorite place because it depends on the continent and I know depends that's on I'm like oh gosh, if I ask her this, that's such a loaded thing. Yeah, uh, no, that's maybe, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Well, then you. So, know, favorite every... city to walk around is Paris, just because it's the most beautiful place you, the banisters on the stair rail are beautiful the windows are beautiful everything is beautiful everywhere you look even the people in the grocery store so i do enjoy walking around looking up in paris and um, just because everything is so beautiful um but some of my favorite moments from traveling um in the maldives we were staying on a local island and the sunrise was absolutely incredible so you know you're on this teeny tiny island and just water all around and doing yoga um, and mo moving through some poses and actually some of the people that were staying at my guest house they started to come with me and I practice with that. Me. yeah it's so beautiful and and or you know there are other people who wanted to see the sunrise and then they ended up joining in and That's so it became so cool. this little thing every morning that happened and we got to enjoy the scenery and then we were sweaty and just jumped in the water. So it was really great. Um, so that's one of my favorite moments. Um, seeing the Taj Mahal for the first time, I was freaking out and jumping for joy. <laughs> uh, you know, it's one of those places that you hear all your life, hear about and see pictures of and seeing it in person is just incredible because it just looks like a beautiful place in the sky and the clouds and that's where it should belong but really it's here on this earth and we can go and touch it so it's pretty cool that is so cool yeah. i love that you know it's funny the story about the maldives kind of goes back to our whole conversation about traveling with people who maybe don't you know want to be fit like okay well i'm gonna go out and do yoga you don't have to go but inevitably you kind of find that tribe right like it's not necessarily the people that you're there with but you can find it's a great way to meet new people and that's, that's a wonderful thing about travel and vacation that sometimes we forget is, you know, you hear all these big movements about let's put our differences aside, but something as simple as like walking or getting up and moving can really bring people together. I think that's yes. such a cool example of that. Um, and then, okay, how did you, and I'm going to flip these. I know I sent, so I sent Becky a little list because I would never make anyone just answer all these questions unprepared. That would be horribly mean. And <laughs> I, you know. I, I will be completely transparent with that. I'm not, this is not completely unscripted, right? Um, so what I want to know though, how you ended up teaching fitness in Spain, because you've talked about taking classes and things, but there are some people that are in here that are instructors and you know, if they ever move internationally, how did that happen? 
Um, well, there, <clears throat> at least in Madrid and in Spain in general, there is a Facebook page for expats. And um, through one of my best friends who lived abroad, she said she became friends with people just because she needed them and the circumstances were that way. But really in real life, if she came back to the States, she wouldn't have been friends with that person. So I really wanted to find like-minded people. So on that Facebook page, I just said, hey, is there any interest in anyone doing bar? And all of these expats were like, oh my gosh, yes, we've been waiting for bar to come to Madrid. And so through that, I just went to a flamenco studio where they had bars and they said, yeah, we rent out rooms and I just needed to pay a flat fee. And I told everyone where to meet. And that's how I, I created my tribe of, of women and men. And I had some Spanish people, some actually native Spanish people come, not just expats because um, through friends and just from hearing about it or the people in the flamenco studio seeing um, me doing these classes and they were just curious about what it was. But that way I was able to find people who I could relate with and have a friend for life. Very cool. I, that was so, y'all, Becky is like one of the bravest people I know, first of all. Like, she just does this stuff. And I know some of us, if you can be like half as brave as Becky, you can definitely like find a place to work out. But it's always so impressive to me, you know, next thing I know, Becky's like, yeah, I've got a bar class in Spain. I was just, man, this girl's impressive. So. And through that, I met some incredible women and I was um, a part of the International Women in Business Society. And it just, had I stayed there a lot longer, I definitely could have put roots down and, and all these women were so supportive. And, you know, you just- But those roots don't go away. And, you know, exactly. the cool thing is if you go back, it's going to be like home almost. And I think that's a really cool thing too that you really embody is the fluidity of home. Like you don't have to always have the same house forever and ever, which is totally fine. And a lot of people do, but you can also be really fluid with your idea of home. As long as you find people that you consider family on your travels. Right. Exactly. Love that. Um, and then if you could give us your number one healthy travel tip ever, like if all the things you've told us, if you could only do one of them. What would it be? Walking. Walk. Walk everywhere. I really like, yeah. I just, people just get really wrapped up in this idea that health has to be this certain box, right? Right. Well, and the thing is too, is that now that we have iPhones that show us, because your, your Google Maps, the blue dot will follow you. It may not tell you the exact directions of where to go, but you can at least see what street corner you're on. And with that tool and the GPS that you have, you really can walk pretty much everywhere. Okay, so you're kind of wondering, oh my gosh, what if you walk into a neighborhood that's not very safe? Okay, so I have, I just walked as quickly as possible <laughs> and to, to where I was going, but for the most part, um, I'm left alone and uh, from, you know, any kind of, if you're worried about getting harassed or anything of that sort, you just keep walking. And, and in a lot of other countries, it's, more common for people to walk than to drive. You'll hear more commonly that I've never driven before. I don't have a driver's license. More people walk, walk, walk. So it's not uncommon to see someone walking on the street. It's more common to see that. So just walking and using your GPS to help you get around is the best thing I think to, to see a city. And you said too earlier, you tell people like when you're leaving, I think you just kind of said that because it's so natural for you. You're like, oh, I tell them I'm leaving at what time I'll be back. Like that too, though, I think, I mean, little safety precautions like that, we know and we know better. So going like that or going in pairs, anything that you would do, we tend to think, oh, traveling internationally is so dangerous. But I mean, a lot of us have lived in or near big cities or traveled to big cities in the U.S. It's the same. I mean, we have danger and we have, um, you know, higher sometimes crime rates in our big cities. So it's the same kind of mentality if you're traveling internationally, wouldn't you say like it's not, and typically, you know, you can check, like what are some things that you check before you go as far as safety? Is there anything um, ask around or? It's like, no, I, I just all the bad alleys. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. So I try to, 
if I plan ahead of time, if I'm staying um, at a hotel, I'll talk to the concierge about yeah. is this safe to do? Or a lot of times I try to find, meet someone locally. So either talking to waiters or bartenders or something and um, they'll tell me or I'll ask them specifically what are some areas I should stay away from or what is something I totally need to do. Um, and I don't set myself up to be a victim. I don't carry around flashy purses. I, wear, I don't wear things that are revealing. I try to respect the culture. So in a lot of you know, Muslim countries, you need to be covered. And so I, I am covered and yes, it's a hundred degrees, but I'm going to be covered because I wanna not only respect their culture, but I'm trying not to um, bring more attention to myself than what is needed. Um, so yeah, just and just asking around and you know, keeping a purse that goes over um, cross body and not just hanging on one side. Um, talking to people who have either traveled to that country or um, lived in that country beforehand, or the the you know because say in India for example it turned into a solo trip. I didn't mean for it to turn into a solo trip, but it did. But the family that I was supposed to stay with. You know, they said, okay, in this one city, make sure you are in your hotel before the sun goes down. Don't go out to bars, don't go party. You need, you know, for safety at this one city. Other than that, you're fine. And so I just listened and I'm respectful to um, cultural rules as well. Very cool. Well, is there anything that you want to add? Uh, you have so much knowledge and this was super, super awesome. And remember too, like, you know, Becky's travel all over, but this stuff applies domestically too. I mean, you can go like to the beach for a weekend and either make the, you know, concerted effort to get up and walk in the morning or just sit in your hotel room. And it's the same kind of thing. You see, you know, nothing I think is sadder than going on vacation. And I mean, I'm like, why do they have movies on demand in the hotel room? Unless someone gets sick, right? Like if someone's sick and they're stuck in bed, cause I have been there, I've been sick. And I was very grateful for movies on demand because I didn't want to do anything. Well, and that was before Netflix. Now you don't even need that. <laughs> but I've been there. I've been sick. But unless you're sick, like, don't waste your time doing something you can do at home. And that idea of getting out and going walking, that's anywhere. That doesn't have to be in a foreign land, right? That can be an hour away from your home. So, so what, my biggest question I ask myself is, is this what I really want to be doing right now? I love it. I love okay, it. So from there, it's like, yeah, I don't really want to be an, you know, power to everyone who wants to, you know, look beautiful, but that's not one of my um, priorities. Do I really want to be spending time straightening my hair, blow drying my hair and putting my makeup on? This is why we get along, y'all. <laughs> You know, uh, so, you know, it's like, do I want to be sitting on the couch right now? Or would I rather be, even if it's just um, standing outside and w sitting at a cafe or watching people, you at least learn something. You, you see something that's different. Do something um, that is going to make your trip memorable. Um, one thing that Michael, my boyfriend, he was talking to me about and you know, he was saying that we all live our own story and to be the main character of your story, not the secondary character of the story. So if you're not the main character, if you're the secondary character, you're always waiting on everyone else and just sitting there and, or you're alone. And if you're on a solo trip, you're, that's not the story or is it the story you want to live? Yeah. Do you want to be the main character? Then do the things that, um, are going to help you live the life that you want are you doing what you want to do at this moment yes. well i know there's a lot of so i'm a mom now and i know my story has shifted but you can still be the main character while you're fulfilling the needs of others as mm -hmm. long as those needs aren't overshadowing you to the point where you've lost sight of your goals and your purpose and your mission and that's something that you know we have to work on every day not just vacation I love this conversation got like it took a turn I'm loving the turn it took though because I think people need to remember that and then too there's probably somebody out there that's saying like well I can't go on vacation I don't have a lot of money and my family can't afford you know if like you're saying go on a walk around your own neighborhood it is amazing 
what you haven't explored in your own town. That's I mean, right. I know we started off talking about all these foreign countries because that's fun and it's different and it's things we haven't heard about. And that's what, you know, that's why Becky's here today. But I think it's, it's important to realize that Becky doesn't just go walking when she's, you know, in India or Spain or the Maldives. She also walks a lot around where she lives. And, um, and I think if you're making those kind of healthy routines and habits, they don't change that much when you're traveling. Wouldn't you agree? Exactly. Exactly. And, um, just seeing the world from different perspectives, and being mindful and doing things differently, maybe driving a different way to work and you find a new restaurant or wine bar or whatever it may be. Or um, really, whenever I went to Thailand and Cambodia, you gave me a journal um, oh, yeah. that, yeah, you gave me a travel journal that in one of the pages it said, take pictures at hip height only. And then go back and look at them. for that exact thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> of course, I, right? I thought it was cool. Yeah. And so I did that. And just the different perspective of what I saw was is so incredible. And you see different things because, you know, our eye level is here or maybe down towards the ground because we don't want to trip. But when you have it at the hip height or looking up, you see totally different things. And it's a totally different experience. I want to go back and do that like around my house now. No, you should. Because then it'll be like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that that little piece of lint has been sitting there for three years. Maybe I'll go. <laughs> or that cobweb. <laughs> I know. Okay, not around the house. No, just keep everything at eye level. But, well, very cool. Well, um, Becky, thank you so much. This was really awesome. And I know that a lot of people are going to get good ideas. Maybe for travel, maybe just for like tomorrow, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Yay, that was such a great video, little chat with Becky, wasn't it? She is awesome. Um, but before I completely log off of this chat, I need to let you know where you can find Becky. So um, you can find her, her handle. I know on um, Instagram is where she puts a lot of her um, pictures and things. You can find her on Facebook, of course. Her name is Becky Riddle, just like I'm telling you a riddle. Um, but on Instagram, her handle is at fit national. So F-I-T, I had to write it down, E-R-N-A-T-I-O-N-A-L, at Fitter National. Um, and that's Becky. So if you ever want to send me a question or find me or check out anything um, that we've talked about, you can always um, find me. My handle is Gretchen Gag, and I also um, have a website, GretchenGag.com. So take a minute and check those out. You can find a way to contact me on all of those. And if you have ideas for other chats or questions or things that you want to hear us talk about, let me know. Um, and until we see each other next time, you guys keep facing forward. It's a bright day on the other side.